Okay, YouTubers, here we go again. Here is your video for, let's see, today is September 10th, which is a Thursday, uh, 2020. Here is just a flying. Anyway, uh, change pace on the video. As usual, as I'd mentioned in the last video, hobby farm stuff has slowed down, so you're not going to see a lot of toy tractor or the old Farm 806 for a while on videos unless it's pushing snow or something odd but uh, anyway we'll talk about some project stuff I've had to do here recently uh, as you can see I'm focused in here on my uh, little 6x12 uh, trailer single axle trailer um, recently uh, my sister-in-law gave my wife some 14x14 14 pavers patio pavers uh, I showed you them in another video, previous video, I believe. Uh, but this is the trailer I hauled them home on. They're about 75 to 80 of them. But so that this, that load would not fall through here, so I'd have to really strap them down, I had these old sides that I'd made up for a previous trailer I had. They used to pull with my blue... 01 Chevy 2500 HD four-wheel drive truck when the hobby farm was bigger. Now it's small, well, hobby farm smaller. I don't need the big gooseneck trailer. Um, it was a 20 plus five Corn Pro, 14,000 pound. Worked real well for what I did. Um, good for hauling hay and stuff. But anyway, we had the occasion where we would want to do a home improvement landscape project. Want to haul some loose materials. Of course, I didn't want to have another trailer, so I just built a set of sideboards for that trailer. And what I did was, uh, I got deck boards. This is one of the, those sides right here. Uh, five and a quarter thick deck board, and they was 20 foot long, and I cut them in half, so they'd be 10 foot long sections for me to work with, easier to do. And then I took two befores, uh, cut them for the stake pockets, and as you can tell, I cut an angle here and here so they'd fit real well in the stake pocket. And then if I had to tarp it, I'd cut an angle here so that, way that that wouldn't pop through the tarp and rip the tarp up. So anyway, that's history. That, that trailer's gone. Don't use that no more. So anyway, I had these laid in the hayloft to the old horse barn. And so I decided to uh, cut the stake pockets the stakes off so they would fit on the trailer and then cut me a tailgate piece and a the front piece and I have those for that way you know I hook it all together and as you can tell I've hooked them together went to the farming farm supply store farm feed store log or lumber yard type store hardware store got these strap hinges and I've got them hooked on here and I just got a bolt dropped in to connect everything together in each corner so it doesn't shift around or go, go very far. Now, the bad thing is I do not have stake pockets on this trailer. Uh, but what I did do was I cut, I cut the, uh, some light in here somewhere. I ended up cutting the uh, stake off so it could go just past this extruded metal bed on the trailer and set in between here and at least hold the, hold the thing firm. Now, so that the thing wouldn't fly off the trailer or uh, slide, I end up taking my load strap, as you can see. And I just ran it across and hooked it accordingly. I know, blah, blah, blah. Killed four minutes plus. Now, little things of reference and details uh, I've learned over the years from friends of mine that drive truck and stuff and a lot of them haul grain uh, they'd always put a twist a twist in their strap holding their rollover tarp in place and I got to asking why and they said well if you leave it lay flat kind of like that it acts like a reed and just vibrates the whole time it's going down the highway 
and it'll wear into the um, it'll probably wear into the paint on the trailer and would fray the um, strap but if you take and put a twist in it in open areas like this down inside your trailer whatever off your load they just stay solid they don't act like a reed and just vibrate in the wind uh, another thing I picked up on recently and <laughs> from you youtubers uh, I learned how to roll these tails up and pull them through so they just hang there and don't go nowhere. I always just roll them up and whatever, you know, try to figure out a way to tie them onto here so they wouldn't go nowhere, but that there seems to work really well. So I've, I've gone to this method here. Look up in YouTube somewhere, there's a thing on how to do it. But anyway, that worked real well for hauling those. Now the sad thing is, no, I cannot haul a loose load of rock or dirt because the <coughs> excuse me because of the uh, extrusion metal in the bed of the trailer uh, but I can do I can work with that later I don't haul that much loose stuff anyway but anyway um, so yeah this is about you know a 10 by 6 6 across about 10 long the bed of the trailer is 12 so there's 2 foot wasted in the back but uh, you get a load on this is, this is plenty good enough so this this works out real well uh some other things i may do is i may take the stakes i got three stakes for stake pockets on that over here i may take two of them off and put here right here and line them up with this post here and this post here so that way if a i do have a load on here and it does slide forward it doesn't break less chance of breaking the deck board that i'm using as a side uh anyway that's just some ideas to kick around uh who knows i may even do it with this one and and put the three across the front instead but i that's why down the back got three but anyway enough rattling about that other projects to rattle on about with you uh recently the red truck the red truck had a wheel bearing on the front go bad actually this left side right here it went bad it kicked up airs on the display of oh my god we're doing oh shoot i got a piece of metal in there somehow hope that doesn't make my tire go flat i'll have to check that Oh, sorry about that. But anyway, did the wheel bearing. Now, for convenience, I let the outfit that does the service work on the truck. Yes, I'm fat, lazy bastard. But so I have to deal with the used oil and all that stuff. I just have uh, another outfit take care of the oil changes, tire rotations, and I don't got to worry about it. Yeah, I know. Do it yourself, you lazy bum. Yeah, I don't want to deal with these oil. But anyway, um, the wheel bearing went out on this left side. Now, they nailed me for $600 plus to do that job. Just one. Now, it's aggravating because I know it could be done cheaper. And I got a stepson that does wrench stuff for a living. And he said it's that a lot easier job than what I thought. But anyway, so I went to a YouTube channel, and I'll mention it, that individual. It was 1A Auto, I believe is the channel name. I'll, I'll try to put that somewhere in the description. Or I'll do like the last, on the shout-out video, I'll flash it up on there for you. But uh, seemed to be a decent guy to watch do work. But anyway, he was showing how to do this step-by-step, step, and it wasn't really that hard. It was just take the brake assembly off, brake caliper, and then three bolts to hold the hub on and then a Jesus nut as I like to call it because this is a four-wheel drive truck on the spindle um, and you just take all that off and away you go uh, so we went from a 600 job parts and labor to a about 180 bucks shipping and all that stuff from a internet supply I got a there's your part number. 
for a 2009 range vehicle. It might be a 2001 or 2000. I don't know what the range is on them. But there's the part number for this wheel hub. And here it is. You've got a splined hole for your uh, axle, drive axle go through. Six lugs. And yes, there is a sensor that goes there for the sensing of the wheel turning. And that got tore up on the other one. But it's just three bolts. And the best part about that uh, 1A Auto, he tells you what tools you need. So there's no guessing going to my toolbox for a few times and grab. I just look at his list. I go grab hammer and chisel to bust it loose. Uh, I believe that was a 15 millimeter hex head bolt and a the so-called Jesus nut. Actually, I don't have the. I think it's like a 20. No. Don't quote me on the net for that because I can't remember. I think it was like a 32 or something like that millimeter. But I discovered with my cheap three quarter drive Chinese brand made uh, socket set an inch and three eighths, I believe, fit and work just fine to take that off. So we went from a 600 letting someone else do it to 180 bucks parts and labor or parts and a few hours of my time changing that out and you know typical work language as we go several foul words as things did not quite come apart like it's supposed to but the truck is over 10 years old and has currently 159,000 miles on it but that's one of the projects I had to do uh, done to the truck uh, one last thing I'll go over here real quick and then I'm going to quit jabbering the PTO clutch on that John Deere 407 gyro mower uh, this, is what, this is what I had to replace that clutch um, it crashed hard clutch did not break loose and slip we broke the nut on it we broke that on it and it hit so hard that even the um, key that goes in that keyway, we busted that in half. So we hit one heck of a thing to bust all that. But anyway, that's why that clutch had to be replaced. I thought I'd just mention that to you real quick. Uh, and yes, those, you know, good luck finding a good used one. It took me quite a while to find the one I did. But I'll keep. Uh, the parts this old one just for parts if I ever tear the other one up enough to where I need this or the metal plates I do have brand new clutches hanging over on the wall and uh, I just need to put the I, one of these years I might put them I'll just see how it does um, that being said I need to give one more shout out to an individual he's a lot of people's favorite Aussie Murphy Law uh, Murphy has always commented on my videos no matter how odd they are or common they are whatever but anyway uh, you get a chance go over and check Murphy out him and his mom are always uh, doing occasionally doing some videos and they talk about his uh, uh, small farm his raised farm beds or garden beds what he does raised garden beds using bathtubs and various things uh, real good guy to watch uh, and uh so on that note, I'm going to duck out of here. I've killed almost 14 going 15 minutes. That's more time than I want to really do videos for. But anyway, as always, hey, thanks for watching. If you watched the whole thing, I do appreciate you. Thanks for subscribing. If you hit that subscribe button, I do appreciate that. And uh, as always, stay safe, take care, and I'll catch you on the next one.